Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part two of how to use the custom fees feature of the Hedera token service. In the first part, we made a custom fee equal to 1% and we incorporated it into our custom cookie token. We stored the cookie token ID in this variable here. Now, since then, I have generated two, two accounts. This is going to be Alice's account and Bob's account. This is fairly straightforward. However, if you're confused, you can pause the video to look at it or you can ask me questions or reference the SDK, um, but we just log the account IDs. And after this, I put in uh, three balance queries and I log the token balances. So here uh, is just kind of some testing in place so we can see what the balance of everybody's token is. In fact, I'll run this just to demonstrate kind of how it looks and what it does. So we get our cookie token ID, and then we get Alice's account and Bob's account. And then we get the balances of all of these accounts. Alice and Bob's account have zero. My account's got a bunch of garbage in it from playing around on the test net, but the, always the most recent is the last entry. And we can check that this 247218 matches 247218. And I do have 10,000 tokens. So there are 10,000 cookie tokens in my account. So everything looks good so far because that was the treasury account. So next thing we're going to do is associate the tokens. So I'm going to head over to the top here and import the token associate transaction. And then down here, I'm going to create a Alice associate. And this is going to await a new token associate transaction. And the parameters we need here are the token IDs, which we are going to associate. And this is can be multiple, so it takes in a map. So we put it in an array in the square brackets. <clears throat> Next, we are going to set the account ID. This is going to be Alice's account ID. And for this to happen, Alice needs to sign this. So we have to freeze this with Alice's private key. Alice private key. Then we can sign it. Oh, we're actually signing with Alice's private key and we're freezing with the client. Okay, and that looks good. <clears throat> now we need to execute this after Alice has signed this. So we're going to call this Alice Associate Submit. And this is going to be Alice Associate. It's going to await this dot execute with the client now that it has her signature. And then we are going to create an Alice asso oops, associate um, receipt. And this is going to await the Alice associate submit dot get receipt. And if we wanted to, we could get information like the status code from this variable and log it. However, for the sake of time, I'm not going to. This is just going to ensure that all of this happens asynchronously and all the steps are executed uh, in the order we want them to be executed with. So now I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to do the same for Bob. So we're going to say Bob Associate, still going to use the cookie ID. Um, and then we're going to freeze this and sign it with Bob's private key. Going to call this Bob Associate Submit. And everything should be all good here. So, fairly simple. We've associated Alice and Bob's account with the cookie token. Now we're going to create some transfers. We're going to create two different transfers, but in order to do this, we need to create, get a transfer transaction module from the Hedera SDK. So I'm going to create the first one. I'm going to call it first transfer. And this is going to await a new transfer transaction. Now, what happens here is we add two token transfers. 
And these have three variables or arguments for their parameters. The first of which is the token ID. The second of which is the account ID associated with the transfer. And the third parameter is the amount of tokens that you would like to transfer. Now there are two parts, there's a sender and a receiver. So that's why you uh, include these parameters twice. So for example, in this um, example that I'm doing right now, I'm sending 10,000 cookie tokens from my account to Alice's account. And so I had to do the minus 10,000 on my account and the plus 10,000 for Alice's account. Um, now I'm going to uh, await a receipt for this just to make sure that this is finished. And then we can log and see, see what's going on. So we'll call this first transfer receipt. And this will await the first transfer dot get receipt from the client. Now we're gonna run this just to see if we have any errors and we're gonna expect to see that Alice's account has 10,000 tokens in it now. And the treasury account won't have any because the fee collector account doesn't get any fees. So look, there's zero in the fee collector account and there's 10,000 in Alice's account. Perfect, okay. Moving on to the second transfer. This is going to await, same deal, a new transfer transaction. And this is going to add, we're gonna transfer same cookie ID, but we're gonna do it from Alice's account. And we're gonna do 1000 cookie tokens. I say Alice is feeling generous because she just got the entire token supply. So she's going to give 1000 cookie tokens to Bob. So we're going to send this to Bob's account ID. Now, something interesting here, in this case, we're going to have to freeze this because this is going to need Alice's signature. So we're going to freeze this with the client and we're going to sign this with Alice's not account ID, private key. Um, and now we need to do, we're gonna, what's, what should we call this one? We should call this second transfer execute or submit. And this is going to await the second transfer dot execute from the client reason we do this is because we have to wait for the signing to happen before we execute this with the client so that it's authorized correctly. And now to, in order to make sure that this has finished before we move on to the next section where we log the account balances, we wanna get the receipt. So we're gonna call this second transfer receipt. And this is going to await the second transfer submit dot get receipt from the client. Perfect. So now let's run this. But before we run this, let's kind of think about what we think is going to happen. So we gave 10,000 tokens to Alice and Alice is now sending 1,000 to Bob. But Alice's account is not the fee collector account, so it will be charged the fees, which didn't happen in the first transfer we executed. So what's gonna happen is there'll be a 10% fee on that 1,000 that she's going to charge, which is going to be 100 cookie tokens. So we can expect 100 cookie tokens in the fee collector account, my account. Now, Alice, she sent 1,000 and she originally had 10,000. So she sh should have 9,000 left. Now, Bob, Bob got sent 1,000 minus the 100 cookie token fee. So Bob should have 900 cookie tokens. So let's run this and see if everything is as expected. Get our account IDs. Okay, awesome. So very cool, we have a hundred cookie tokens in the treasury account. This is exactly as expected. 
We have 9,000 cookie tokens in Alice's account and 900 cookie tokens in Bob's account. So that's perfect. Um, it's exactly as we expected. I appreciate everybody for coming and watching and learning how we can demonstrate the use of the custom fees on the Hedera token service. Um, and if you guys have any questions or any feedback, please reach out to me and I'd be happy to address those questions and concerns. Thanks for watching.